Hello and welcome to the first of many video tutorials regarding C Sharp Learn the Right Way series. We are going to be starting off with conditional statements and particularly if statements. Without wasting any more time, let's start in. Notice that I am working out of the main method. This is the entry point of the application. All console apps, um, when they start up, this is the triggered method that the operating system starts first when an application begins. So I am going to create a string variable called username and I'm going to set this equal to jsmith. There's a few operators when, with regards to if statements. There is an equals operator, not equals, less than, greater than, and or and many more but we're going to focus on the main ones that you're most likely going to come across or use so we are going to do a simple test and test whether username is in fact equal to J Smith now notice that I'm using a double equals which is the comparison operator a single equals like the one up here where my mouse is is the assignment operator we're assigning jsmith to this variable but below it's a comparison it's tests whether username is in fact equal to jsmith so we're going to write a little message back to the user and say username equals J Smith and I'm going to run it and you can see as expected username does in fact equal J Smith and it runs the block of cold code inside of that if statement now let me show you the does not equal if username does not equal and let's start off with J Smith and write a little message username does, does not equal J Smith okay now notice that this block of code does in fact not run we only left with the very first if statement which tests true this code does in fact test false because we know that username equals jsmith and this block of code does not land up running but if we go and change our initial area a uh, variable and change it to smither jsmither no, then if by looking at this you can see that the very first test will test false and this will not be displayed but the second one will test true because jsmither does not equal to jsmith so let's go ahead and run this and you can see that now that is working. Moving on to our next common operator is the um, the greater than and less than. So I'm going to create an, an integer variable and set this equal to 5. And then we're going to do a test to see whether x is greater than 2. And right now as it stands we can see that yes, x is in fact greater than 2 because x equals 5. So we're going to write a little message saying that x is greater than 2 and we're gonna run this and uh, what did I do wrong oh, I just need to change this to line <laughs> so that it can be on separate lines Okay, so we can see our greater than x greater than 2 condition did work and run, and we can see that x is in fact greater than 2. We can go in and change this 5 to a 4, and then you can see, yes, 4 is in fact greater than 2, but let's try 1, and you'll see that block of code lands up not running because um, 1 is in fact not greater than 2, so that conditional statement then tests as a false. Now, let's set this equal to 2 and run it. Now, once again, this test 2 greater than 2 will test false because 2 is in fact not greater than 2, it's equal to 2. Now, there's another additional operator you can add to this is um, greater than equals to. And you'll see that 
when you run this test, you'll see that yes, actually in fact, um, 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So when we run it, you'll see that it tests true just fine. Um, as soon as you make this a lower digit and run, it doesn't come out. So um, and let's just change greater than to or equal to two. Okay, a little wordy, but serves its purpose. So um, now, next up, we have the AND or OR operator, which is used to um, do multiple tests in the same if statement. So we're going to do a test to see if the username is in fact equal to JSmith and whether x is greater than 2. So let's do this test. So let's, uh, let's say, let's test if username equals JSmith and for the purposes of this, let me change the username to J back to JSmith. Okay, and then we are using the AND operator. So both conditions have to be true for in order for this to test true. So we'll go x greater than equal to, we'll just do greater than 2, x greater than 2. So we are testing for to see if both the username equals JSmith and x is greater than 2. And only if both of those conditions test true, then we can um, write, um, run the code block. So, okay, so you could see that if username is in fact equal to JSmith and x is greater than 2 then this block of code will run and as it stands right now it does not test true because x is currently only 1 so we passed the first test in this example but in the second test x is currently set assigned to um, 1 so let's assign this to uh, 7 or 6 sorry we'd make it 6 and you'll see that the statement does in fact run this very bottom one. J Smith equals J Smith and six is greater than two. Now let me give you an example of the OR operator. Um, um, if for whatever reason you were doing a test where you just wanted one of the conditions. You just require one condition to test true and the other one can be false or true but you just want one of the conditions to test true. So we're going to say if username equals JSmith and we're using the OR operator and we can say x is greater than 2. Now right now we know that x is um, set to 6 so that is in fact greater than 2 and username equals John Smith. So based on that we are we're pretty certain this will run. Let's get this code out. Okay, now we have our, our, our feedback message, and so we have our new OR operator that is in here. So as of right now, we can see the very bottom message, JSmith is equal to JSmith, or 6 is greater than 2. So right now, both of those are testing true, so it's happy, but for argument's sake, let's say we want to test for that smither again. So right now, we know username is JSmith, and th so this test, this first test should fail, but the second test should pass. and as you can see, um, it's still producing the statement. Now, obviously, I've hard-coded hard JSmith, so ignore the actual verbiage in there. But you, uh, you can see that that block of code has, in fact, run. And, um, and that'll be it. Uh, that wraps up our operators, uh, um, using the operators as part of our if statements. Please stay tuned. Our next video will be regarding switches. Uh, key component to 
C-sharp and used all the time.